Coach, what's going on? I'm Coach Besaw. Thanks for coming by. And today I want to talk to you about one drill that you can implement in your practice plan to help you play at a fast, fast tempo on game day and also help you maximize your reps on offense throughout the week so that you can master the spread and be more efficient on offense. So let's not waste any time. Let's get right into it and check out the drill. Let's go. All right, coach, this drill here is going to be our inside run drill. And so we've got our quarterbacks, our running backs, and our offensive line at this drill. And receivers are off doing their thing during individual. This drill we run during the middle of the week. It's more of a Tuesday, Wednesday drill for us because um, Monday is a big uh, kind of like a jog through day where we put an emphasis on teaching, coaching, educating the kids on what to expect on game day from the defense. So we really front load them with the, the front that they're going to see, um, the box that they're going to see, the you know the secondary, the coverages, all the tendencies and whatnot. That's, that's really discussed on Monday. We try to answer as many questions as possible on Monday um, so that when we get into Tuesday, we don't have to worry about all those things. We know exactly what to expect from the scout team. And we can just really focus on playing with great tempo, playing as fast as possible, getting as many reps in as possible so that we really set the tone for how we want to play on Friday. So what you're going to see here, the drill during inside run, being at the lower level, we split the field with the younger guys. So we got half the field to work with. Um, and what we do here is we put two footballs on the field. Okay, so we'll put one football in the 30 yard line. And let's say, you know, the other football is probably on the 15. That's 15 is a good spot for that. Um, and then where I stand I'm, as the offense coordinator, I, I've always stood on the sideline at this drill. I am signaling in the plays. Okay. I'm calling it. I'm signaling in the plays. I don't signal on game day. That's spread out through a bunch of different coaches on game day, but for the sake of the drill, I'll be signaling in the play to the, to the offense here. We put our offensive coaches in the middle, um, but just out of the way. And so, you know, we'll have our offensive line coach, our running back coach, and our, you know, I'm the quarterback coach, so I'm over here. But if you, your quarterback coach isn't the play caller, uh, then he'll be in the mix there as well. And then also uh, the guys that are going to be substituting. So any players that are here, um, instead of putting them off to the side, we put them close to the middle too. Uh, and you're going to see why we do that. Um, and then with the the two footballs here we're going to set a scout team defense to both footballs okay and so this is really nice um if you've got extra guys that are usually standing around during this period use those guys and put them on scout team defense for us uh when it comes to the defenses that we face you know we we get a true six-man box even front you know the four two um, and then we also see some odd fronts from time to time but usually what we get is just a regular four two and then kind of an oaky front like five zero five so I'll just set that up here. Obviously, if we're getting something different for the week, that's what we're going to put out on the practice field for them to get reps against. But just for this, we'll, we'll put up an even front and then we'll put up an odd front. And then this is usually what we get when we face odd fronts here. So we get a stand up backer there. So we still get a six man box. Okay. Um, now, to start the drill, we'll put the offense to one of these footballs. So let's just say we're up here. Okay, so we're going out towards midfield, 10 personnel. Okay, we're set. Now, before the drill begins, I'm going to signal in the play to the kids. I never verbalize anything to the kids, whether it's inside run, seven on seven, team offense. Plays are never verbally communicated to the kids. They're always through hand signal. That way they get used to that on Friday. They get used to not verbally communicating with each other um, and us as coaches. So they get the hand signal. So let's just say we're gonna run inside zone to the right, okay? Inside zone read, okay? So we're gonna be blocking it, boom. All right, we're reading that defensive end, end man on line of scrimmage. We're running inside zone read. Let's just say he chases the running back here. Okay, quarterback's gonna get the read. If he chases the running back and he, and he uh, shrinks down the line of scrimmage, then quarterback's keeping it and he's running for himself. Okay. Now, at this point, I forgot to put up um, our scout team coaches. So you got extra scout team coaches. You can put them in here as well. They kind of manage that side of the ball as far as the scout team goes. Uh, and they're key to this too, so they can spot the football for you. So quarterback keeps it for himself. 
you know, he runs five yards past the line of scrimmage, whistles blown, plays over, plays called dead. What happens here is that the ball carrier, whoever it is, quarterback or running back, he needs to immediately run the football to the scout team coach so he can hand so he can spot it. And that's one thing, one emphasis that I have uh, with the uptempo no huddle is making sure that the ball carrier hands the football to the ref. I hate watching um, guys that get tackled and they, you know, they drop the football on the ground. They try to, you know, be flashy and do something with the football, um, or they sit there and try to throw it to the ref and none of our refs can catch the football. So all, all that is doing is just making us play slower than what we want to play at. Um, and I ended up realizing that I have to teach these guys, these, these kids that they literally have to hand the football to our coaches, uh, when we're, when we're practicing. So that's what we do here hand the football to the coach, plays dead. And then once they hear that whistle, what happens is everyone immediately turns around, okay? And they sprint to the other side of the field, okay? Where that other ball is spotted for them right here. And the other defense is waiting for them. At that time, as everyone's sprinting to get to the ball, what they need to be doing is they need to be getting their eyes to me on the sideline making sure that they get the right formation, making sure that they get the right run call and the direction. And so uh, for me, it's really easy to tell, you know, who, who's doing that, who's paying attention, because um, if, if it's clicking and they are disciplined and picking up the signal in between plays, then they're going to be able to run to the other ball and they're going to be able to get set right away. And they're going to be able to run what's called, right? We're going to make our calls but we're going to be quick and we want to snap the football up as fast as possible. Okay. Uh, if they're not getting their eyes to the sideline and they're not getting their eyes uh, and picking up the play in between, uh, then it's really obvious because then there's a lot of talk at the line of scrimmage. You know, you got guys asking what the play is, you know, you got the hands up in the air. Like, I don't know what to do. Uh, and to me, that is that they, uh, that tells me that they did not pick up the play or the signals as they were, you know, running from the previous ball. So that's one thing that I look for. Um, and that's one thing that can get coached. Um, and one thing that they're definitely have to learn to do is in between plays, you got to pick up signals. Another big pet peeve of mine, uh, when we're trying to play as fast as possible on game day is we're giving signals on the sideline. The first sign that comes in is the formation. And then we roll through the whole play. And what happens is guys get the sign for the formation. So what they do, they turn around and they run to go get lined up to how, whatever formation we called. Well, as they turn and run, they're missing the rest of the signs. They're missing any motions that we have. They're missing the run or the pass protection that they had, the route concept, whatever it is, they're missing all that information and they can't pick it up until they're set. And again, that's costing us time. So we teach our kids uh, how to, you know, have spatial awareness, understand where the football is being spotted and how to uh, understand how to pick up signals um, without turning their heads and without taking their eyes off us coaches. So that's what I look for here in this drill uh, in between plays. Okay. So what you can kind of see here is that we're go going to now kind of yo-yo this thing back and forth. We've got two defenses set up. Our only, our, our one offense is in the middle and we're going to be repping this thing back and forth uh, as we yo-yo between the two defenses. And again, we're trying to play as fast as possible and get as many reps in. So we don't, this isn't a huge coaching period for us. We're never going to stop this drill, whether it's, you know, footwork um, that needs to be coached up with the line or the mesh point between the backs. Um, we're coaching on the fly and we have to get used to that. Um, and we have gotten used to that. Now, the best way for us to coach on the fly is by putting our offense coaches in the middle of the drill. So, you know, if the right tackle is really struggling with a certain run scheme that we're trying to get accomplished, then we need to take that right tackle off the field, right? We'll take him off and we'll put his sub in and we'll let him get those reps as they yo-yo back and forth as our coach addresses that one individual player. And once that individual player gets coached backed up or gets coached up, then, you know, we'll send him back on the field and we'll make that exchange. Kind of like what you see in hockey with the exchange on the ice, right? There's constantly guys coming in and out and the play never stops, stops moving, right? The game continues to go on. And that's what we want out of this drill here. So we never want to stop the drill and kill our tempo. Um, so we never are going to stop and coach up and, and kind of just waste time in my opinion. So we always want to coach on the fly. Um, and that's why we put our, our backups here or any substitutes that we have on offense towards the middle of the field, 
uh, in the middle of the, the drill. That way they can sub right in and right out really quickly if we need it. Now, the other reason why I really like this drill is because you can see that the two defenses are set up, right? We, we face even and odd fronts. So if you're going into a week and you see, you know, you know a team that they're going to be playing in two different fronts mostly, you can set these two different fronts up here. And if you can get 30 reps in, 40 reps in uh, against these two different fronts, you are going to really quickly master the fundamentals with your kids in that time period. Okay, because again, you know, for us, we don't do a whole lot of different things. We do a, a few things and we try to be really good at those few things. So they're getting, um, uh, they're getting reps at just a few different things that we do uh, over and over and over again uh, against a defense that they're going to see on Friday. So here um, you're, you're working and you're focusing on playing at a, a really fast tempo but you're also able to maximize your reps because you're going to get more reps in this time period than you would probably in one full day of practice if you weren't running up tempo, no huddle, if you weren't playing at this type of pace. So that's another reason why I really like this drill. Um, we have been really successful ever since we started implementing this. Our tempo has never been faster. When things are clicking, we're usually operating in anywhere between 10 to 12 seconds in between plays. And for us, that's, you know, that's a sweet spot for us. Uh, and then again, you know, we'll do this throughout the off season too, leading up. So we face different fronts throughout the off season, uh, same run schemes that we'd be running during the season. So you can just kind of add up all those reps that your kids are going to get. If you're able to play at this tempo and you're going to run, you know, a few concepts here and there against the same fronts over and over again. All right, coach. So there's one drill that you can implement right now. Uh, in your offense, in your practice plan throughout the week. I hope it made sense. If you have any questions, please let me know. I'd be happy to help. And if you found the video useful, please give it a thumbs up. I really appreciate it. I guarantee that if, you, if you've never done this before, you haven't ran this drill before, you don't practice this way, I encourage you to consider it. Give it a shot. And I believe if you see it through, then you will definitely see the benefits uh, that come with it. So thanks again, guys. I appreciate it. Lastly, if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, please hit subscribe below and tap the bell right next to it so you can get notified next time I come out with a video. I'm Coach Besaw from spreadoffensefootball.com. Thanks, guys, and I'll see you on the next one.